Hello, people. Welcome to uh, the Lee Cole 3 podcast with James Proctor, our mobologist. James, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing really good, Lee. How are you today? Fine, thank you. And we're going to have a very interesting story today. So why don't you give me the rundown in general? Now, you were watching uh, Mikey Scar's, uh, his show that he has yep. in his, in it, where, where does he have this show? You can't see it. Yeah, it's in Patreon. So so this was one of his private videos. It's not on the YouTube channel. It's within the, the Patreon uh, channel, which uh, is a private membership, which I have a membership to. And he kind of went off. Not, he kind of uh, called Sammy out on a couple more things, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, uh, you know, specifically, uh, there was a video a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of weeks, a couple of days ago where he was, uh, talking about uh, it was the story of of Jimmy Brown and and how he was um, trying to take over the family. You know, very interesting stuff. But then, as part of it, they were talking about how the chin was behind a lot of this. And anyway, if you remember in 2021, Sammy Gravano made the claim that he was going to take out the chin. And it was going to involve, you know, getting an Uzi, going through a window, and basically uh, oh, he made a one-man Rambo. Yeah, he made it sound like Rambo. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to put up that video right now just so we can remind people what he said. And yep. then we'll we'll talk about what Mikey Scar said about sure. what Sammy's saying. Okay. Sure. It gets to a point that he calls me and he says, let's take a walk. Something very important, very big. Okay. He tells me, I know that you always thought that Chin was behind this. I've got a little bit of information. I'm not going to share that, but I think you're a thousand percent right. Chin was behind us, for sure. Take him out. You want me to take Chin out? Yeah. Chin is the boss of the Genovese family. Very, very powerful. Extremely powerful. But I know in my heart, he was the guy behind Frankie the Chico's. I never forgot that. I never wavered. So this was music to my ears. I was ready to go. Okay, John, I'll take care of this. I start working on this hit. I want to stop it there for a couple of seconds just so I, I don't get a copy strike. Well, okay, so right now he's talking about John Gotti has told him to go take out the chin. And now yep. uh, over the next mi- a couple, two minutes, we're going to hear about uh, how Sammy's planning on doing this, mm-hmm. uh, where this is like Rambo Part 6. Yep. I go by his club. It's got a big bay window. He sits in there playing hard sometimes with an old man. The wee hours in the morning, and I'm standing not too far from him and looking at him. I'm visualizing this hit. What would I do? On the corner, I would have a van. A driver and a guy in the back of the van. a garbage bin, a quarter of the way filled with rocks, really heavy. The van would pull up to the club. The door would open. Guy would jump out with this heavy can of rocks and fling it right through the window and take off.
there'd be another car on the corner. As soon as the van got there and did that, he would pull out. Nobody could pass it. On the other corner, I'd have two shooters. One of those shooters would be in a crash car. I'm putting together the hit with my crew. One of them say, who gets out and kills me? It'll be me. This time, it'll be me. We have an Uzi. It's an Israeli Uzi machine gun. I will jump out right behind the guy with the, bit, with the rocks. I will kill him and whoever's in there with him. I will be dressed up so that I can go right through the front window. So that probably the whole thing would come down. But if it didn't, I would be covered. I can go right through the window, jump in there, kill him, whoever he's with, and come out. You're on mute. Okay, let me. Here, here's what the pro. Okay, what what does uh, what did Mikey Scar say about that scenario right there? I'm going to tell you why. I can actually sh tell you why that scenario is BS. Yeah. So you know he was dismissive about the story uh, because uh, Mikey had actually asked Sammy when they first talked when he had gotten out of prison. Why didn't you let us know about the situation out there with the chin? Because, you know, Mikey knew about it later on, but at the time that this was happening, he didn't know the chin had put people out there to try to take out uh, folks in the family. So, you know, he had already taken out three of our guys, and why are we just sitting ducks out there? And who were the guys who, took, who were the guys the chin took out? Uh, it was Bobby Boreello, right? Yes. He was. Yep. And he was taken, he, and Bobby Borrello was set up by the mafia cops. They went and found his address. Yep. And Big Frank Lestrano killed him. Yep. Then you got, the Chico was blowing up, as everybody knows. Yep. And then the mafia cops also took out Eddie Lino. Yep. So they he, actually did it right there in his car. Yep. Pulled him over. And uh, once again, this is the mafia cops. So, you know, they took out three very big guys pretty fast, would you say? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, okay, now they're talking about him getting back at the chin. And I'm sorry to cut you off there, but why exactly did Mikey, Mikey Scars say that he doesn't think this is true? Yeah, no, because they had actually talked about it. Uh, you know, Mikey asked Sammy when, they first, when he first got out of prison, why didn't you let us know about the situation with the chin? And because, you know, he was with Junior all the time. You know, Mikey was. You know, he felt like we're just sitting ducks out there. And Sammy said he didn't have an answer for Mikey. You know, he didn't under, he didn't know why. So and Sammy so, never mentioned to Mikey about the story? Um, no. Okay. And here's here's why I, 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 I could tell you why I think the story is BS. First of all, he wasn't exactly a hard guy to get to the chin. He walked up and down the street every day in his pajamas. Right. Every morning he would walk with his brother. And not only that, do you know, besides John Gotti, who was probably the second most watched man by the FBI? Oh, it's probably Chin, I'm sure. Uh, how much surveillance do they have him of him in his pajamas going up mm -hmm. and down the street? I mean, the FBI was all over that club. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you, you know, so you're talking about. I can't picture them saying, oh, go to, in front of that club with all the FBI agents there. You know, they, they got the chin. They, they got the chin in their sights. They're watching him. They watch Gotti in front of the Ravenite. They watch yeah. Gotti in front of uh, uh, um, uh, fit, uh, Bergen Fishing Club. Yeah, Fishing Club. right. So, mm -hmm. so they're watched at these clubs. So yeah. I don't see where anybody would make a book. This is where these guys felt safe when they're walking into their clubs because they knew that that the feds were watching those clubs. Yeah, well, exactly. You remember there, there was we talked about it the last show with uh, with uh, with Watts, Joe Watts, where they had some crazy guy that um, shot out a window or something at the Raven Night, and it didn't end 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 well for that guy. No, they, twenty guys <laughs> chasing him down the street, and they yeah. Then a couple of them pulled him in and beat him to death and, and shot yeah. him. 
or mm-hmm. beaten and shot them. Yeah. Okay? And, and, and so, see, this is it. If, you, if people think logically when it comes to Sammy Gravano, his mm-hmm. stories are easy to dissect. And so. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. If you were really to take out the chin, if it was me, I would have done it um, when he was doing his walks, you know. You don't or when he was going to his... visit his second family. Yeah, his or when he was family. going to visit his mother, walking to his mother's house. Yeah, uh, you, you know he used to do all that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he wasn't he wasn't like Gotti. He was a lot easier to get to if they wanted to get to him. Right. Uh, but you know, so I, I that whole club thing going through the window and being Rambo and flipping upwards, you know, and and saying surprise. First of all, you don't go running into a club where you know what you don't know what's in it. No. You know. That's the a, a hit is logically planned, and nothing's logical about going through the window with the Fed sitting all over the place over there, is there? No, not at all. And he should have been the first one to it. He's such an expert in in planning hits. He should have known how stupid this was. Yeah, he tried to make it sound like the hit on Castellano. That's what it sounded like. He was yeah, did. kind of uh, story into it. Hey, mm-hmm. So um, let me ask you a question. What else? Uh, that was a very interesting. Uh, Mikey Scars is talking about a few things. Uh, what else did he talk about that you found interesting? Yeah, there was a, another part that involved Sammy. So uh, before John Gotti went to prison, um, he put together a team. They call it a fist team. But basically what had happened was is that uh, there was a faction internally within the Gambinos, you know, led by uh, Jimmy Brown. And that, that faction was the Sicilian faction of the family. Is that correct? Exactly. They were loyalists to Paul Castellano. Okay. And uh, that's Jimmy Fiala, uh, Jimmy, AK Jimmy Brown. Yep. And we got Dan Marino, Danny Marino here, right? Yep. Dan Marino. Mm-hmm. So explain to us what Frankie said. Uh, I'm sorry. What, what Mikey said was the plan of the chin and of course Casso, who was playing both sides he's a clever little bastard Casso. yeah but he was right. playing both sides and uh because you know he knew about the original you know he had no problem with the hit when castellano got hit mm-hmm. but then he was going over to chin and he was playing chin just like he was yep. playing everybody else so explain to us what uh from that part on yeah so so what it, what ended up happening was that Frank DeChico spoke with 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 Gas Pipe that you know because they needed permission to take out Paul and so they knew they wouldn't get it from the you know from the uh, west side they knew that but you know they thought they could get made talk to the uh, Columbos and also to the Lucases and, and get permission and then they would deal with the uh, Genovese family later so anyway. Uh, he, he gives them permission. Gatpipe said, yeah, I, I talked to uh, Tony Ducks. He said, yeah, go ahead and, you know, we're behind you. And so that wasn't the case. You know, so it was just uh, so basically after Paul gets killed, then um, you see that the chin's working with um, Gatpipe to, uh, you know, to put out the hit on five Gambinos. So Gatpipe is being his ruthless self. I yeah, mean, exactly. He knows, you know, he, he's playing the, here he is in the middle and he's playing these much bigger families than his. Yeah. Uh, I guess in the end, he, um, uh, guess, guess pipe seen a, a, a good scenario for him if certain people were taken out. Right. Yeah, he, he did. And, and so, uh, gas pipe was always, uh, you, you know, just very treacherous, um, individual and, you know, I, you know, I don't know who he really did like. I don't think, you know, he was, he would turn on anybody. So, you know, I don't know the reason that he, you know, decided to do that, except that it did make him look good to the Genovese family and to his uh, boss. And I just so. want to read something here real quick. In November of, ni- of uh, 1997, it was reported that Casso, now a government witness, revealed the plotters selected Genovese associate uh, Herbert P- uh, Pate to kill Gotti with an impre- uh, improvised explosive, an e- IED. Castle told investigators that the plotters decided to kill Gotti and DeChico with a bomb. 
in order to make the Gambinos think the Zips did it. Yeah. Uh, because the Zips were known, the Sicilians were known for the bombing in Sicily. Right. Our Sicilian mafiosas were involved. All those Sicilian gangsters are notori notorious for using the bombs. They have long been forbidden in American mafia since they put innocent people at risk. Casso right. told authorities that Pate was selected because he had no links to the Gambinos and thus would not be recognized while stocking, while staking out uh, the Chico. Okay, I just wanted to read that part. And uh, yeah, yep. You can take it from there. Yeah, so, you know, the whole plan was that the Chen wanted to put uh, Jimmy Brown as boss and then. And Jimmy Brown ran the uh, all the waste management uh, racket for the Gambino family. And then you had Thomas Gambino that he would have as the underboss. And, and there's no evidence that Gambino was involved in any of these plots at all. And so he was running the garment industry uh, for the family. And so they would put him as underboss. And then this guy, Danny Marino, uh, would be a, a, a consigliere. And so... That was the plan uh, for, you know, and this would allow the Chin to have more and more power uh, with all the families. If, if they could basically put in a puppet or put in someone to run the Gambino family that would do what the Chin wanted. So at this point, uh, Gotti kind of realized that they were trying to, you know, with from within inside the family, they're going to try to take him out. Yeah. Uh, so what was what, what did Gotti do for protection of uh, protecting himself uh, in, within within the family, within the Gambinos? Yeah. So so the one thing for sure, I can tell you this, uh, Gotti wasn't afraid of anybody. So he wasn't afraid of the chin. He wasn't afraid of, of, of Jimmy Brown. You know, part of the problem during this time was that he was going through the indictments. He knew that he was going to be arrested at any moment. But. He wanted to put in place a team, just like you remember they had the Paul Castellano hit team. He wanted a similar team that actually role would be to protect the family from an inside job like what Jimmy Brown or what yeah Brown was planning with Marino and in conjunction with Casso and the uh, Genovese family. So that was so Gotti wanted these twelve people as the core group of that, that wasn't everyone that supported Gotti. I mean, it's just that he wanted to have a group that he could trust that would protect him and protect the family from these loyalists. And Jackie, um, the nose, Jackie, the nose is one of them, right? Yeah. Jackie, the nose was, was one of them. Uh, so was Mikey scars. He was on the, in this team, uh, junior was in this team. Uh, right. there was, there was uh, Tommy Sneakers was another person that was on the team. Um, you know, Borello was on the team. So uh, there was a lot of folks that were on the team that were loyal to, to John. But the problem was John gets pinched. Well, before, oh, well, he, before, he, gets yeah. pinched, before he gets pinched, let's talk about 1988 is the first time that Gotti went to the commission after this hit in 85. And yeah. when he went to that commission... The chin was there. The yes. meeting went very bad. Yeah, uh, it, it, it did not go well at all. And no, so, it did not. And so, and also at that time, he uh, he never had no problem with the Lucchese, but then that's when the, the problem started developing. So yeah. John Gotti wanted to get to, the Lucchese's were pissed because Gotti mm -hmm. wanted to get the bananas back on the commission. Yeah, and, exactly. And the Lucchese's did not want that. Right. Neither did the chin at the time. They just, and this, and the chin, this was playing chess. This was just uh, two powerful men playing chess. So, you know, the chin didn't want the, the family to come back, you know, the Bonanno family, because we all know that uh, Joe Messino was, was the acting boss at that time. He was running things. And so the Bonanno family would have been close to uh, John Gotti and the Gambinos and that would have given him more power. So yeah, that was that was all it was. And so uh in that meeting, it was interesting. There, you know, that was denied. And then also uh Gotti wanted to increase the number of soldiers and, and that was to denied as well. And then uh lastly, John mentioned that, hey, you know, I'm going to make my son. 
And, you know, he thought that might have been something positive. And and unfortunately, the chin was very um, dismissive about it. And it just was really hypocritical, in my opinion, because the chin had his son, uh, Andrew, as a made guy. So but he didn't want to give John Gotti the, you know, even a congratulations for his son getting made. So they're trying at this point, they're trying to weaken this fan uh, to Gotti to where he's pretty much has only a certain amount of people around him and it'd yeah. be easier for them to take him out. Yes, exactly. Okay. And, uh, and what else did Tommy have to say about that? Didn't he had a couple of th other things to say about it? Yeah. Yeah. So with, with Sammy, so what was interesting to me and also uh, Mikey brought this up. So we talk about, you know, this group of 12 guys that would be, part of what they call a fist team, you know, basically loyalists around John Gotti. But one person was omitted from that group, and that was Sammy Gravano. And so Sammy was not in, in John. For whatever reason, John didn't believe that Sammy was loyal to him at this moment. And and so Mikey thought it was very odd because when they when they when his boss, which was Jackie Nose, came to him to tell him about what God he wanted to do, you know, Mikey didn't understand why Sammy Gravano wasn't going to be part of that group because, you know, he was the underboss, but, you know, there was no answer from uh, Jackie knows. It was just that, you know, God, he didn't want him. This is the time that God, he started sensing Sammy was doing some stuff behind the scenes. Exactly. So that was what was, was interesting. And maybe, you know, Sammy, who knows? I mean, Gotti may have been thinking that Sammy might be uh, with the other faction or might be, you know, trying to do something else. So he he wanted this fist team not to have Sammy. So and Sammy, he had, Sammy. Sammy had good relations with the Lucchese's. I yeah, mean, he was friends with uh, supposedly good relations with, uh, you know, Gas Pipe. Well, imagine them two. What, what a friendship developed there. They could never they, they would never turn on each other. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, that, they, they like grew up together. In hell. That's like a friendship. Yeah. In hell. All you need is Roy DeMeo, and they can sit down <laughs> and start their own crew. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. Yeah, they were growing. They grew up together in Bensonhurst, and so they they go way back. And you know, but Sammy was on that hit too, uh, meaning that the five people that the Chin and and Gas Pipe were going to take out. The other two we didn't mention is John Gotti, which would have been the fourth person. And then uh, the fifth one was Sammy Gravano. So, uh, you know, Casso would have taken out Sammy. Yeah, but Sammy Sammy says that uh, in, in another video, Sammy says that they were telling him what a great guy he was and Sammy has nothing to worry about no more. That's what yeah. Sammy tells you. You know, Sammy yeah. goes, oh, they know. As a matter of fact, he said, uh, he said that they said, oh, well, Sammy's a good guy. You know, we don't have to kill Sammy. Yeah, I mean, that's what Sammy said. But well, that's not Sammy, true. They, they, were no. on, they were planning on killing Sammy, too. Yeah, exactly. And, and the chin, you know, he's also said that the chin was liked him as well. And, you know, I don't see that as see that either. I do know that probably chin did interact more with uh, Sammy, at least previously because of the construction stuff. He didn't know John Gotti when John Gotti came in because Gotti was out of Queens. They, you know, he didn't interact with, right. with them. And, and you know, that the chin, that you, you know, the chin called in Caso because Caso had a good relationship with the, with the, with, uh, the two cops, the mafia cops, mm -hmm. they did stuff for him. So this, oh, yeah. and these two cops tie Bobby Borriello and, uh, uh, and Eddie Lino to Caso. Doesn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. because that, don't, you know, those cops were basically for uh, gas pipes guys. Yeah, they were. He was paying them. He was paying them for to do pieces of work. And so, yeah, he was his eyes and ears. He, I believe he called them his crystal ball because he would be able to find out about because these these two cops were were investigators, were detectives for homicides. And so he called him his crystal ball because they would tell him information before it happened. You know, that's kind of how gas pipe was able to go on the lamb uh, ahead of time because of the cops. He knew when indictments were happening. So, yeah. People, please hit the like button. 
or if you haven't subscribed, we have quite a few people that watch us that are not subscribed. So uh, 50% of you. So um, if you haven't subscribed and you like what you're watching, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And please always hit that like button. That like button is very important to us people that do these shows. So if you can do that, we'd appreciate it too. Okay. And I, so I'm going to take that one down quick. And then I'm going to put up this one. Help, please help support this channel with cash app or uh, PayPal if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. Underneath is a heart. You can also hit that as a donation. And that's uh, greatly appreciated too. We don't do too many lives where I can go out there and uh, get more money. I do them this way. And when I do this this way, it's much more difficult than doing a live, believe me. Uh, me and uh, James, we put a lot of uh, effort into these things. Um, and sometimes it takes us a day or two to develop these, sometimes three days, right, James? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what do you think? Do you think that, uh, that Mikey's still putting out good stuff on Sammy when you're, when you're listening to his uh, Patreon? Yeah, I, I really do. I mean, I, I feel that it, it's a perspective that, uh, that in my research, I can validate. You know, a lot of stuff, he's an insider, obviously. So there's stuff I didn't know about. But the thing, I've never caught um, Mikey saying anything that wasn't true based on my research. So whenever he says things, you know, I've not heard before, you know, I, I'm going to believe him. So I don't, with Sammy, unfortunately, just time and time again, he, he just loses his credibility with, with these tall tales. And if you were, if you were going to take out, if you were going to take out a uh, chin, mm -hmm. he walks on that sidewalk every day. You, wouldn't it be a lot better to get somebody with a scope and a rifle that stand on top of one of those buildings there in the city and take yep. them out? It would actually probably be something you, you could do and have 90% chance of getting away, especially. With, oh yeah. With the amount of people that, uh, or surveillance that's on that road, on, mm -hmm. I mean, on that street. Yeah. Uh, this is why, you know, so many people go and they listen to Sammy Gravano. And if you, if you listen to the stuff he talks about, he tells a great story. There's no doubt about that. His stories are exciting. He, yeah. he should have been in the mo in action movies, yeah. you know, writing plots and stuff, because this stuff he's telling, a lot of it's true, but a lot of it's not. Would you say that's pretty much right, James? Yeah, it definitely is. And I actually watched his last, you know, he's doing these lives. And so it looks like he's being a little more careful with what he's saying. I think probably some of what uh, Mikey Scars has been able to put out there. Oh, guys like, are, are, are guys like us? Yeah, or us. You yeah, know, we're you putting. Know. So he's being a little more careful. And in fact, uh, you know, if you remember, I told you, wow, this this was kind of boring. So he was talking about things uh, like, uh you know how to be a a good be a good guy you know uh, love your love your wife even if you divorce her and stuff like that so he was uh you know talking a little bit about police uh reform or prison reform so you know nothing really out there so i mean he's starting to i think maybe see that he's got to be careful what he says hey listen if anybody knows how to love their wife it's sammy i <laughs> mean granted he killed her brother yeah you know but that's just being a good husband. You know, it's just the brother. That's all it is. It's just the brother that grew up with his wife. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and kind of funny when you think about be good to your wife. I mean, yeah, yeah. What worse just can you do to your wife than to kill funny. her brother? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's kind of why I found it ironic. He's, he's talking about, you know, just being this, this good guy like that. And, and then it's coming from him, of all people. Yeah, well... Nothing surprises me when it comes to Sammy Gravano. Uh, are his stories interesting? Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sorry, I find Mikey's stories more interesting because he's actually giving you the facts, where Sammy yeah. kind of uh, shreds the facts to pieces. Uh, yeah. That was interesting stuff. I appreciate you uh, uh, helping me out with this video today. I yeah, mean, you, of course. You, helped me out. you did most of the research. Thank you. You know, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. And yeah, it was with Mike, Michael, I just, I know that thing that I appreciate about him is he's not always going to uh, be 
make himself look like he was a hero. He never does that. So, you know, even negative things he, about himself, he's willing to put it out there. So, you know, he's more balanced, I guess is the word I'm trying to use. And so I appreciate what he's, he's putting out there for us, his viewers. It's kind of funny. Sammy picked a battle with him. And then after the first attack, counterattack by Mikey that came back at him, uh, he shut Sammy up. Sammy hasn't even mentioned his name, has he? No, no, Man, not at all. Funny. I think Sammy said something about him uh, um, just being a hang around guy. And yeah, yeah. After that, that it was he just, he's never said anything negative again. I guess people no. said, Sammy, don't go after Mikey Scars. <laughs> he was with you in the street. Yeah. But anyway, thanks a lot, people. Thank like you. I said, please hit the like button. Please sub if you have not. If you want to donate, feel free to do that. James, thank you so much. And we'll put this thank up. Yep. End of the month. Good yep. way to end the last day of the month. Take care, my man. All right, thank you. Take care.